let's find the value of x given that 9 to the x minus 6 to the x is equal to 4 to the x. Well, our first step will be for us to divide through by 4 to the x. So here we have 9 to the x divided by 4 to the x minus 6 to the x divided by 4 to the x equal to 4 to the x divided by 4 to the x. Now notice that on the right hand side, 4 to the x divided by 4 to the x is 1. Now on the left hand side, we apply the property of indices that says when I have a to the n divided by b to the n, this is same as a over b. And as the exponents are the same, we combine the exponents. Now we do this here and here. So this becomes 9 over 4 with a combined exponent of x minus 6 over 4 with a combined exponent of x. And this is equal to 1. Now notice 9 is a perfect square, which can be written as 3 squared all over. 4 is also a perfect squared, which can be written as 2 squared. And this is raised to the x, so I'm going to be raising this to the x. Minus. Now we can break this down. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we have 3 over 2, so this is 3 over 2, all raised to the x. So I'm going to be raising this to the x, equal to 1. Now remember the combining of power that we applied here? We're going to be applying that here. So this is having a common power of 2. So this can be written as 3 over 2 with a combined power of 2. And remember, the whole of this expression is raised to x. So I'm going to be raising this to the x. Minus, this is 3 over 2 raised to the x equal to 1. Now, our next step will be for us to apply the property of indices that says when I have a raised to the m, and this is further raised to the n, this is equal to a to the, I'm going to be switching the positions, raised to the n and further raised to the m. So from indices, we can switch positions of powers, which we're going to be doing here. So this will become 3 over 2 raised to the x, and this will be further raised to the 2. Minus, this is 3 over 2 raised to the x equal to 1. Now notice that we have 3 over 2 raised to the x and 3 over 2 raised to the x here, So, which means we can introduce substitution. We can say that let 3 over 2 raised to the x be equal to y. So that means this expression cannot be written as y squared minus y equal to 1. So we have a very nice quadratic equation here. Now we're going to be moving 1 to the left hand side. So we have y squared minus y and as 1 crosses to the left it becomes minus 1 equal to 0. Now we should be using the quadratic formula to solve this. Our a from here that's the coefficient of y squared is 1. Our b is the coefficient of y, which is negative 1. So I'm going to write negative 1 here. And c is a constant term, which is negative 1. Now we're looking for y. So y will be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now let's substitute our values. So y will be equal to negative b, b is negative 1, plus or minus the square root 
of b squared, that is negative 1 squared, minus 4 times a times c. So 4 times a, a is 1, times c, c is negative 1. All over, oh, sorry for that, all over 2 times a, that is 2 times 1. Now simplifying further, we have y to be equal to negative times negative is positive. So I'm going to be having 1 here, plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared is 1. Now minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 is negative 4. All over 2 times 1 is 2. And then simplifying further, you see that y will be equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 1. Negative times negative is positive. 4 all over 2. So we have y to be 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4 is 5 all over 2. So we have a golden ratio. So we have y to be equal to 1 going with a positive plus the square root of 5 all over 2 or y is equal to 1 this time negative square root of 5 all over 2. Now recall from our substitution since we are interested in looking for x from our substitution we said 3 over 2 raised to the x is equal to y. Now 3 over 2 is always positive no matter the power we raise this to. So this is always positive. Now look at what we have as y. So y here from our first case is positive. Why this other case y is negative. So that means we're going to be rejecting the negative y and stick with the positive. So because the left hand side and the right hand side must be positive. So we have 3 over 2 all raised to the x to be equal to y. The positive 1 is 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 2. Now, in order to get x, I'm going to be introducing logarithm. Since the base here is 3 over 2, then the log I'm going to be introducing will be having a base of 3 over 2. So this will be log 3 over 2 raised to the x. Remember, the base of the log will be 3 over 2. This is equal to, we do to the right hand side as well. So we have log of 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 be 3 over 2. Now, our next step will be for us to apply the property of logarithm that says when I have the log of m raised to the p, this can be written as p log m. That means this expression can be written as x log 3 over 2 base 3 over 2 equal to, now the right hand side we have the log of 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 base 3 over 2. Now from in, the law of logarithm rather, when I have the log of b to the base of b, as long as the number and the base are the same, this is equal to 1. So it therefore shows that this expression where the number and the base are the same is 1. So this will be x times 1 equal to the log of 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 base 3 over 2. x times 1 is x and this is equal to the log of 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 2 base 3 over 2. Well, we can decide to stop where, here if we want, but you can decide to continue. Well, I'll stop here because I have an irrational number here. So in the end, I'm going to be having an approximated value. So you can feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. 
And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.